Hello, welcome to another episode of Montana Shares, your opportunity to find out about the nonprofits that make our state great. I'm your host, Bill Crane, and today I have Chris from Montana Generational Justice. Welcome to the show, Chris. Well, thanks for inviting me there, Bill. You bet. Yeah. So probably a lot of people still don't know what you do, so let's right. start with the high view. What does Montana Generational Justice do? Right, yeah, Montana Generational Justice is a nonprofit actually works with Montanans, principally um, seniors, veterans, Native Americans, low to moderate income, to help them uh, get their basic legal documents. Mm -hmm. And the basic legal documents are the things that you would think of uh, like a basic will, but a big focus we've had, uh, and that's what we'll talk about here in just a few minutes, is with advanced directives. Mm -hmm. And specifically with uh, healthcare powers of attorney. Okay. So, yeah. And so you go out and help these groups that you just mentioned mm -hmm. throughout the state periodically, more or less, right? Exactly, right. Yeah, we've got a statewide presence, and um, you know the primary uh, approach that we've taken is is twofold. One, educational. Mm -hmm. So we've been invited by a variety of different entities. Uh, many here in Helena, people would recognize places like uh, Helena College, uh, the Friendship Center, St. Peter's Hospital, to talk to. Uh, people about advanced directives mm -hmm. and what are those because because of uh, uh, a lot of uh, interest on the part of health care providers and the legal profession on that. Okay. Um, in addition then around statewide uh, we have conducted then clinics where we then actually offer these documents and during a, a, a very kind of streamlined efficient process uh, you know folks like yourself come in identify what are they looking for we go ahead and produce those documents, and before they leave in an hour to an hour and a half, they have a finalized document that uh, can be filed somewhere either with their healthcare provider, or with, uh, we'll talk about the end of life registry, or um, that they keep, you know, uh, in a safe place for, for future use. Okay, yeah. so, great. Yeah. You've kind of mentioned, alluded to change in the wind yes. in, the, in a positive sense, I hope, right? right. Exactly. Yeah. So what do you have going there? Well, there's 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 an effort in uh, collaborative effort, and that the uh, Montana Generational Justice has been fortunate in participating in, that involves uh, Montana lawyers around the state, involves uh, healthcare providers, uh, involves uh, the Palliative Care Association, uh, in in trying to come up with a uh, a um, efficient m uh, healthcare power of attorney. Okay. Okay. And um, there's a lot of variety of uh, documents that have been out there used in the past. Some which attorneys prefer, some which the medical profession prefer. But for the first time, we've had sort of a uh, a uh, collaboration mm -hmm. where both the, the medical and legal profession uh, are are visiting about what this document represents. Okay. And you know, from both the legal perspective, what are the things that Montana you need to make sure that you've got covered in Montana. And then from the healthcare perspective, for a healthcare provider, no matter what your age, when you go and get health um, uh, care uh, and uh, health uh, services, that they've got the, 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 the document that helps guide them in delivering the best care to you. You know, mm -hmm. whether that's end of life or even, even under some, you know, circumstances of an accident or some, some uh, situation where you don't have the ability to convey to that medical provider what you'd like. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, so what's the trajectory on this? Will this mm -hmm. be something <coughs> that just as a collaborative effort, a document comes out of it? Mm -hmm. Will this be adopted by somebody, or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how will that work yep. when it's all done? So yes, so all great questions, and and so Montana is actually on a national effort, and so this is this we're not unique, okay. and so th to answer your question, the the, the goal would be to have this document recognized. Now, whether it's gonna be uh, universally accepted, I guess, because as you can imagine, various um, stakeholders mm -hmm. uh, you know, like certain documents, okay? Our goal right now is, is sort of a, is, is kind of just a, a low bar, if you will, of if we can reach agreement that this would be a document that can be used. Mm -hmm. now, Ideally, it would be the agreement that would be used, but mm -hmm. it would be recognized by a healthcare provider, by attorneys, by, by individuals like yourself who say, hey, I need an advanced directive, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and I guess that's the other is bringing these entities so that they understand, well, generally advanced directives can mean a lot of things. And so we've really come uh, in these discussions to agreement on, we're not talking about, say, 
a uh, do not resuscitate, you know, a, a pulse, which is the physician's order for life-saving treatment, which many mm -hmm. people, you know, um, are, are familiar with. Or in the past, some people might have heard um, Comfort One or Best Wishes and so forth. Those mm -hmm. are those are sort of aspirational documents, but they were they're not they they don't either meet what the medical folks would like or even what the lawyers would like, you know, mm -hmm. attorneys would like. And so the goal would be acceptance of this document. The ultimate goal would be this would be the document that would be uh, get get used. And as I mentioned before, this is this is not a document that's been developed out of whole cloth. It's, it, it's, it's a nationwide effort to sort of individually by states recognize what provisions, say, Montana allows for Bill or, or whoever to have in an advanced directive versus perhaps uh, the difference in uh, if you're a resident of Wyoming. Mm -hmm. But there's a sort of a template that's, mm -hmm. that's been proposed and each of the states are being asked to give serious consideration to. Among the things that have driven this is the Medicare system. Because in Medicare enrollment, when individuals enroll and then have their various annual checkups, their physician or, or the medical provider is asking them, do you have an advanced directive, yes and no? And if you say, yes, I do, you have, say, a healthcare uh, power of attorney or, 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 a, or a pulse, then they're going to ask you, where is it? Mm -hmm. Let's have it, you know, the, the, your doctor or treating physician is going to say, let's make sure it's in, you know, in our medical, in your medical records, whether it's with the hospital or with the medical clinic. On the other hand, if they ask you, do you have an advanced directive, and, and you say, well, I don't even know what that is, okay, mm -hmm. or I, no, I don't, okay, then the challenge has been where the medical providers then direct people. And that's sort of how the men, Montana Generational Justice is, is filling this sort of um, uh, a need is both education for the medical profession to say here's here's what you know you might be suggesting to, to to your patients they need to go and see an attorney but then the other is what's the document that's being used and that's mm -hmm. this document that I've uh, that I've been mentioning um, so is there a time frame on any sort of adoption is there a goal time mm -hmm. to get this wrapped mm -hmm. up and available mm -hmm. yep great question Bill um, the clinics, and, and so let me back up a little bit. Okay. One of the things that Montana Generational Justice has been doing, and, and I'll mention here an upcoming opportunity for, for uh, both people locally and within the region. But during these clinics that we've been doing in the last four to five months, we've been using this form that's been sort of a consensus. It's being tweaked like everything else. Mm -hmm. But the general, the general kind of structure, everybody has agreed that yes, this makes sense. We've been using those in, in the clinics, getting feedback, and, and those documents have, have been produced. We've produced now probably uh, more than 100 mm -hmm. in a variety of clinics. There is, a, as an example, there's a clinic that'll be happening here in Helena at the end of this month in conjunction with St. Peter's, actually the second one, because we did one um, at the end of June, and they were very uh, impressed, and it was successful enough to, to, to get interest that they've asked us to come back. Mm -hmm. And the clinic I've kind of described. We're also looking later in August of uh, uh, St. James in, P in uh, Butte, likewise, uh, through the, their, their senior uh, community connections, is interested in having us um, help them. And part of the population down there is some Native Americans who actually reside in the Butte or surrounding area that uh, could use some of these documents for their own health care um, uh, needs. Let's go back to the people that you're serving. So yes. you've got a clinic at St. Pete's coming up. Yes. Who's, who should be there? Great question. It doesn't matter. Most people think, well, this is sort of, you know, uh, I'm a senior and, and I need to think about it. I will tell you the clinic that we had, the demographic here uh, two or three weeks ago when we did it at St. Pete, and, and we, were, we were very interested to see what that, because we promoted it uh, locally. And we had from 20-something-year-olds uh, to 70-something-year-olds. Mm -hmm. And the recognition was because it doesn't matter, and that's, that's why the hospitals and medical care providers are saying, where most people would think of, oh, I, I need to be a senior to worry mm -hmm. about these sorts of things, okay? It's really more into life decisions. And they're saying that that's, that's sort of a, mis, a misunderstanding because any treatment, if you are incapacitated, you need to have designated somebody. Mm -hmm. So in the case of myself, you know, if, if, uh, so if I'm unable to, 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 uh, to uh, indicate what my medical treatment should be, 
I need to have a medical health care power of attorney that designates an agent. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that agent might be a spouse, might be a trusted friend, might, might, might be a, a, you know, a, a colleague. But they would be able to give then direction to the medical folks when I'm unable to. And mm -hmm. so just what I indicated, the kind of the 20-somethings to the 70-somethings, I, I personally had some conversation with a 20-something-year-old, and she just said, I didn't think about this, but, you know, I'm now old enough. I should think of somebody because if something happens to me, and I end up in the emergency room, I, and I cannot convey my own wishes, who's gonna do it for me? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. There's some statistics, <clears throat> seven out of 10 Americans don't have a will. Right. Which, and I chatted with someone who's like, what, I'm gonna give someone my student debt. I understand right. that, right. but this, this yeah. half of that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, documents yeah. right. is really important for yep. everyone yep. of every yep. age. Funny you should mention the, the statistic, because the statistic national, uh, nationally is, is, is about 30% or less. Mm -hmm. have this document. So that's telling you, you know, 70% or more do not have an advanced directive of some sort, w regardless of wherever they reside in whatever part of the country. But they mm -hmm. don't have some direction. And, um, and, and again, I, I can't overemphasize on the Medicare side of things, it's become really critical mm -hmm. um, because they ask that and they'll keep asking, <laughs> you know, until you, until you produce some document. But on the other end of the spectrum, you know, in terms of um, age-wise, is uh, j just what I've indicated is, it, it doesn't matter your age. If, if you end up in a situation where you don't have the capacity to convey what your medical treatment should be or what you would like, if you do not have a designated agent, then, then the medical facility is at a loss. Mm -hmm. And they're going to throw whatever treatment because, right. again, it, you know, it's the, the ultimate the Hippocratic Oath. You know, first off, do no harm, but they're going to try to make sure that they do all the medical things that are necessary. And what they're finding is sometimes that's not what Bill or Chris would like to have happen, mm -hmm. okay? And so they're trying to honor, and, and again, the medical community has been really um, critical in this discussion because they, they said th the focus has been on, on the patient's rights. Mm -hmm. And this this is a critical piece of that. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 um, so, okay, yeah. So you lo help a lot of people out with yes. a lot of great legal information yep. that they need. You guys can probably use a little bit of help periodically too, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So so if you if you are interested and so moved to go ahead and and uh, support this effort, is go to the, our website at montanagenerationaljustice.org. Okay, and make a contribution to those. Mm -hmm. The clinics we've been doing to date have been at no cost, mm -hmm. okay? And that's because we had a grant that was sort of saying, show us what this need is. Uh, well, show us not, not the need, but the practical way of doing it, because the need mm -hmm. is there, as right. I've demonstrated. Right. It's how can this be done in an efficient way, and also a way that brings in all these aspects of the health community and the legal community, okay? So absolutely, if, if individuals are interested. Now, the other is we participate with Montana Shares, right. and Montana Shares has an annual raffle coming up. Right, we and we've made And we've made a contribution of a, uh, of, a, of a basic document package towards that. So we'd encourage you know, those who have seen the Montana uh, uh, Shares raffle information to participate. One of the great Put, prizes. Yeah, yeah exactly. 20-some great prizes. Absolutely, yeah. And, and, and the dollar value of that is anywhere from five to $700 for those sorts of legal documents, depending on what people would like to have. Mm -hmm. Okay, a basic legal document with advanced care directive, maybe a beneficiary deed, and that's a different, you know, to, to, to do some other uh, estate planning sorts of things. Um, but absolutely, and just indicate in that raffle, then Montana Generational Justice, so we can get the credit for the, for the raffle. But uh, right. um, yes, yeah, so thanks for asking on that. We're, and we're getting close mm -hmm. to yes. the campaign season and workplace giving, yes. so you'll be an option there yep. as well. So yep. Yep. we're just kind of getting where we're thinking about brochures and, mm -hmm. and workplace giving. It'll yep. be coming yep. up soon. Right, yeah, and we appreciate all the uh, promotion, ef effort, and support from Montana Shears because it's such a critical critical uh, program that supports lots of nonprofits. Obviously, we're one of those and, and, and uh, we appreciate uh, benefiting from those contributions. Super. So, yeah. Well, thank you for coming on the show today, Chris. It's okay. always informational having you yep. on. And as always, I thank you guys for tuning in and I hope it's informational for you as well. Have a great evening.